Hi, beautiful souls, it's Adana, and I'm here today to do a walkthrough of the Foxfire Kitsune Oracle deck. This deck was inspired, created by Lucy Cavendish, and the artwork is by Meredith Dillman. This is an amazing deck. I have, um, I have opened the box and I've read through the first part of the guidebook and done a couple of readings with it. And I'm just enchanted, inspired, amazed, encouraged um, by everything that I've read and experienced so far with this deck. This is a um, two-part box, Blue Angel publication. And inside the box, you have the cards and the guidebook. The backs of the cards are red with the uh, fox, with the kitsune in um, transition from human, from fox to human. This is the guidebook. Here's the back of the guidebook. It's usual, um, typical, uh, Sorry, Blue Angel. It's typical Blue Angel shiny cardstock, and um, shuffles really nicely. Even though the cards are large, even though the cards are large, you can riffle shuffle them from the corners. The guidebook is really, really pretty. So the pictures for the cards are full size, and some of them just take a um, a piece of the card. It almost looks like a comic book. Um, the way that the pictures and the text have been interlaid, the borderless, um, the pictures extending right up, the full bleed on, on the page that they are. It's just, it's really lovely. Beautiful, beautiful guidebook. I will share with you um, quite a bit from the front. So if you have not heard of this deck or um, seen another walkthrough, it is really, really a special deck, and there is um, some magic that you may not be familiar with in this deck. This is very a very magical deck. The Fox Fire is. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about Lucy's experience and what the Fox Fire is. So the Fox Fire is thought to be a sacred, uh, a sacred flame. So one of the sacred flames that has been carried from ancient times by different light beings and is now um, carried with the kitsune. And the experience that Lucy Cavendish has had was with the kitsune in um, her homeland of Australia and also in Japan. And it was in Japan that she was passed the information and the, the teachings and the gifts of the kitsune. And then after some encouragement, created this deck the sacred flame is thought to have been carried from Lemuria to Atlantis, and then it was um, when Atlantis was destroyed, was saved and carried by other light beings, um, and still exists in this time and in this realm in very magical places. And one of those places is the fox fire with the kitsune. Kitsune means fox in Japanese. Kitsune refers to both the animal spirit as well as the, the animal in um, its form in this world. In the first part of the book, Lucy describes how it took years for her to connect to the spirit, but with persistence and with gentle, um, with patience, she was able to connect to the energy of the kitsune and what they wanted to share and, and bring forward at this time. There's also uh, a little bit that describes about the connection to Inari. You may be familiar with um, Inari, the Japanese um, fried tofu. Um, sometimes the, the wrapping is around, around rice. So Inari refers to the goddess, the god of fertility, the god of rice, the god of farmers, and it is the god of the sorry, the god goddess of the kitsune. And so there's this connection between the the preservation of the um, of rice, which is the original energy 
um, currency of Japan and the kitsune. And the, the folklore, the, the myth mythology, the magic is all interwoven and really, really interesting. And Lucy weaves a really beautiful story in the beginning of this guidebook so i would if you're interested at all in japanese culture japanese history and folklore i would highly recommend this deck it's a really beautiful um it's a really beautiful teaching that she has shared there are 45 cards in the deck and i'm going to do a quick walk through of the cards and i'll and i'll point out i'll highlight some of the features of the cards as i go through so the kitsune, after 50 years, are able to transform into human form. And the older the kitsune are, the longer they can sustain the human form. And so after 100 years, the kitsune are able to stay much longer to marry, have children, and so forth. And so these tales are woven throughout um, the messages in the cards. And by reading the beginning of the guidebook, it will really help you to kind of understand what this deck is all about. So there's a, a very strong fire element to the card and a very strong um, sense of magic. Beautiful fey in this deck. And a reverence for Mother Earth herself. This would be um, a pathway leading up towards a, from a shrine to the water, I'm imagining. And there's also a great deal of reverence for the trees in this book, as, in this book, in this deck as well, too. Uh, acknowledging the sacredness of the cherry tree, the cherry blossom, the peach, um, the ginkgo tree. And there's also quite a few cards with dragons on them. And there is message from, very beautiful messages from the dragons. As I mentioned, Lucy lived in Australia. And so her first experience with the foxes was one of astonishment, really. I actually wasn't aware that the Europeans who emigrated to Australia brought the foxes with them just for fox hunting. And so these dis displaced creatures um, were treated extremely poorly and had to find their way in a land where they didn't belong and so as a child as a young woman Lucy observed and was very curious about about the foxes Meredith Dillman just did a beautiful job with the illustrations there's also quite a few of um, cards that are connected to the water. This is gorgeous. And you will see that um, the whole idea of reverence for the earth, be it on the land or the water, is really a strong part of this deck. Moon energy. The fox, the fox fire, the kitsune, not the fox fire, the kitsune is thought to be um, balanced equally uh, with masculine and feminine. So there is, um, it is neither feminine nor masculine. But most often when it transformed to trans, but when it transforms to human form, it transformed as a female. And it, I believe, I was when I first saw the card I just put down, I thought that the, the bird must be uh, kitsune in the form of a bird. So kitsune is able to transform into other forms as well besides human form. It could transform into a house or into a forest or a bird. 
this card reminds me of almost of an eight of swords, but in a really beautiful, mysterious way. I really like this card, Wooing Entanglement. Sometimes we have to get all wrapped up in order to begin the process of unweaving. Sorry for the glare, there's a chandelier overhead at the store here. Tremendous amount of power in this deck. It may not, um, it appears to have a strong uh, feminine goddess energy. I love this card too. So I was gonna say it may not, um, May not be one for the guys. And all the foxes, this is nine tails, so this is the most. Oh, this is an interesting story. Um, this is nine tails, so the highest evolution of the fox. And most often the fox as a evolved uh, fox will be white. And the fox lives to uh, a thousand years and then would transform um, to an ethereal form. And the if you're a Pokemon, Pokemon fan, you will be familiar with Ninetales, who is uh, the evolution evolved one of the one of the evolved forms of the, the fox Pokemon. And so it comes from the same same legend. There are few, I think maybe only two cards that have um, a masculine form in this deck. The keywords on the the keywords on the cards are not really. Uh, of course, any deck you can read intuitively and do whatever you want with it. But what I was going to say is that the keywords on the deck do not really give uh, enough. It's the guidebook is very well written, and it is it's worthwhile taking your time to get to know the deck and for reading reading the guidebook thoroughly. So you understand the intention of each of the cards. So let's shuffle the cards and I will pull a card for you for today. Today is February 16th, so we are transitioning towards the fullness of the first full moon of the lunar year, of the lunar calendar. So when they're big like this, I like to riffle shuffle them, sorry, yeah, riffle shuffle them from the corners. So if you have a particular question, bring that to mind at this time. This is very much a deck for magic folk. And so if you are interested in magic, I was initially purchased this deck to have it as an oracle deck to pair with the um, with the manga tarot, which I just did a kind of a thorough re-look at. I posted a video a few days ago, but I had no idea that this deck was such a magical deck. 
so I probably will not be using this deck um, with the Manga Tarot. I don't feel that it has that kind of magical energy. This Oracle deck would pair really nicely with um, a Fey deck or any deck that you feel kind of has that, um, that magical earthiness. All right. So just one card, and I'll read to you from, from the book. So your message is threefold protection. All right, so I'll read from the book for card number 41, Threefold Protection. When this card comes to you, there is no mistaking the energy around you right now. There is a strong force of protection with you, with three times the power of other forms, and this protection will take place over a threefold period of time, three days, three weeks, three months, three years. There are three situations in which you will be cared for, where unexpected angels will turn up, and what could have been harmful will fall away, bringing no menace at all. The beings about you who are protective may seem gentle and even delicate in their form, but have no doubt that they wield powerful energy. Just as this mermaid with her trident guards the realms of the Kitsune and all who dwell within, your own boundaries and borders will be protected. You will no longer let those in who seek only to make use of what it is you can do for them. There will be a cessation of the unkind talk that rises from within and emotionally in time you'll begin to feel more and more content with a calm and centered self that no longer is tempted to fall into the pain of the past. You will have allies come to you, small kindnesses will be done that treasure, sorry, that reassure you and you will know exactly where you need to go and where you need to avoid. Rising up before you now is this mermaid, her oceanic energy strong, her senses alive with vigilance, and her whole being focused on your safety. She stands as the guardian of the seas of the Kitsune realm, and likewise, you too will be protected. Feel the strength about you now and step forward into your life feeling this trifold safety all about you. So what a lovely, lovely message of protection. So I just want to say thank you to Meredith Dillon and thank you to Lucy Cavendish for this amazing deck. And of course, thank you to the Kitsune and the Foxfire. Stay well, my friends. Namaste.